on this computer. All right. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast Trivia. Tonight, our guests are Rusty the Roof Cockeyes, a famous Texas Hold'em player from Downers Grove, Illinois, and my best friend since I was five years old. We have Ben the Drop Brennington from Onyx. He's the reigning champion, back to defend his title. We have Evan Wild Boar Boyle, my number one patron of the podcast. We have Nick the Greek Adair. Sorry, Nick. I only know one Nick the Greek, and it's not you. From the Gun Dog at Yourself podcast. And Courtney B. Bastion from the Bird Dog Babe podcast. Courtney, you know what the B is for, right? Do you know what? Oh, come on. We got no connection here. Oh, this is going to make for good audio. Ron, we can hear. <laughs> you just can't hear. We can hear yeah, fine. It's Ron, just it's, you. It's, you can your, hear. it's your 128K connectivity, Ron. That's what yeah. You up. Okay, Sorry, I'm in the, I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Sorry, did you hear your introduction? I did. I'm sorry. And you know what the Courtney B. Bastion is for? The Courtney B. Yeah. You're, no. You're, Rocco, come on, go with me on this. That's not my middle name. You're the only... <laughs> oh. It's Jean. It's very, it's very Midwest. It's Courtney Jean. Courtney Jean. Well, I was trying to like be funny. All right. We'll just scrap that idea. <laughs> the wind out of my sails, Courtney. All right. We are going to play the second episode ever of the Hunting Dog Podcast trivia game. The first question is, what breed of dog was owned or represented by the following institutions? Alexander II, Tsar of Russia, the Finnish Air Force Squadron in World War II, President Truman had one named Mike, Beach Boy Carl Wilson had one named Shannon, Mitt Romney had one named Seamus, the mascot for Pace University is named T-Bone, and a fictional dog in Stephen's King, Stephen King's novel, The Stand. What breed of bird dog? And we'll do a little sound effect. Do, 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 do. Don't look up Stephen King novels on your computer. All right. Everybody feel pretty good about this or feel terrible about this? I feel terrible. great about this. Terrible. Terrible. Um, terrible. Um, um, no I idea. Guaranteed, um, I guaranteed I'm dying for first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Starting from the bottom right, Courtney, what's your answer? What, what breed of bird? I'm going, I'm going with Brittany. Brittany and uh, Ben. Coming across, what's your breed? The only real bird dog. Pointer. What did you do? Put your drot hars down? Yep, you're fucking right, dude. <laughs> Evan, <laughs> Evan, what did you come up with for the breed of dog? A Springer. All right, Springer. Pointer. Brittany. Uh, Nick, what did you come up with? Springer. Springer, two Springers. Roof, what did you come up with? The, I didn't get it till you said Carl Wilson and Henry Gross did a song. Shannon, she's gone out to sea. That's about Carl Wilson's his dog, the Irish setter. Remember the song from the early 70s? Well, yeah, you and I would. These guys wouldn't. Yeah, right. I started writing that and crossed it out. Did you Damn. really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want, yeah, I want to was, hear it more. Was Irish, yeah. I want to hear wow. more about 1970 when the wagon trains and stuff. Yeah, oh, we'll get there. We got there. I've got some 1800s questions. Life wasn't, <laughs> easy. Life wasn't easy on the Oregon Trail, trust me. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Wait a minute, Ron. Yeah. Game I got over. that point. I got that point. Right. Yep. Game over. Uh, Evan, I'll give you a buzz a little later. I already won. <laughs> All right. Our second question comes to you, comes to us from, well, they all come from me. I was trying to be like meat eater when they <laughs> tell you where their questions came from. Um, morning doves are the most harvested game bird in North America. On the average, they live 16 to 18 months. One dove was, was banded and reached the age of what when it was harvested? 
Closest answer gets the win. Needed in months or years or what? Uh, well, I will. I'll give you a hint. It's not in months. It's not nineteen months. Okay. <laughs> it's. It was a banded dove, that was was harvested. <coughs> How old was that dove? <coughs> Yeah, I, I can't believe you guys don't know more of this stuff. I mean, you, you call yourself up when bird hunters. So. Like, Ron, where are you getting these questions? Just from your memory he's, bank? No, he's getting them from the jacked up question book. Oh, no, no. No, I'm not. Um, all right, hold on a minute. We need a sound effect. Time's I got up. logic applied to my answer. All right. We'll keep the order, we'll keep the, order the same. Courtney, coming across the bottom. What do you have for the oldest banded dove harvested? We're at 12. 12. Ben, what do you got? Six. Six. Evan, what do you got? 11. 11. Nick, what do you got? Nine. Nine. Rusty, roof. Well, since morning is not like the morning, it's like morning of the death. And normal morning's about three days. <laughs> so I took three days times the 18 months. I came up with 54 months, which would be four years, <laughs> six months. <laughs> well, he has really good logic. Even if it's yeah, wrong, I like it. I'm um, thinking like a computer. The, yeah. the, the answer wow. is 29 20 well, that, makes, that makes Courtney being the closest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I won that awesome. one. That's too bad to tell you. I'm a little off then. Oh. All right. I 29 years? Yeah. I mean, but you think about it. Impressive. When you read those DU magazines, those ducks, you'll see them 34 years. And mm -hmm. apparently birds can be pretty long, long, you know, a lot. That crane we shot, we thought that was well, old. 12. Yeah. 12, yeah. Well, I had 29 written down. I must have broken up when I said nine. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right. We'll give you a third of a point for that one, Nick. All right. Our third question. I always like to bring in a little alcohol related subject with this. Wild Turkey is one of many brands of alcohol that target hunters. Approximately how many whiskey, bourbon, or any type of hard alcohol brands are there? that have hunting influenced labels closest answer wins how many brands of whiskey or hard alcohol use target hunters with their their branding such as wild turkey and this is not limited to north america but i would say it's limited to english speaking countries because I wouldn't know if there's a Russian wild. Come on, Jägermeister. Come on, no. Yeah. English right, speaking. There's one. There's, there's one. So there's at least two, isn't there, isn't there Simon? What In what world is Jägermeister English? <laughs> well, it's not, but you're, you're taking it out of context a little bit. <laughs> I, I think most Jägermeister I'll, probably sold me. I'll, I'll let Rusty be the tiebreaker because he seems to be the voice of reason around here. <laughs> All right. Let's start again here. Courtney, what do you got? How many brands of whiskey? 23. 23. All right. Bren, what do you come up with? You got to show us the number, Ben. You can't wait for the last one. 126. 126. Ben is a very heavy drinker. Uh, Evan, Evan, give us 30, your 35. 35. And Nick, how many brands? 137. Are you guys out of your mind? Roof, how many well, brands? I, I, I went back to the morning doves and I went with 54 again. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's no love to do that now. No. <laughs> where, where else am I just going to, what am I going to? I don't know. Run the into answer, the liquor store and count bottles? We were just expecting more. The answer is brands of alcohol that target hunters with their name or label are 28. Oh. 28. That's Should, what I said, 26. Nah. What, what was your answer? <laughs> 26 plus 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All so, right. Ron, you you know my day job. I'm telling you right there, now that's wrong. <laughs> I, I've set up and ordered more than 26 uh, hunted, hunting related labels of alcohol. Well, the, there's know. there's definitely more yeah. than that. Okay. Yeah, because this famous grouse and all of those count. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 So there's Nick, a lot more than that, Nick. When, yeah. when red when breast, I think there's 126 of them. Though. Ron, you're, do you're, we get bonus points for how many we get to name? Uh, no, I did not do that research. No, but we can, okay. we can have a follow up on that one, of course. Ron, your your questions have been called into practice or into question multiple times now. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know that this is not the meat eater podcast. We don't have anybody arguing about the question or the answer. Because most of my answers are not going to be substantiated by any research. This is not a democracy. This is not a democracy. <laughs> and Nick, it, Nick, if you want to throw your alcohol background in, you can do a gun dog at yourself trivia night, and I'll come there out. There we go. <laughs> you can do it. Well, Got it. Uh, uh, just so you know, Ben, Ron is normally just directionally correct. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you. All right. Our fourth question. George Armstrong Custer, from a letter written on June 12th, 1876, less than two weeks before he perished on the battlefield, wrote to his wife, Tuck, Swift, Lady, and Kaiser are all sleeping at my feet in the tent. George Custer Armstrong, George Armstrong Custer, whatever, was famous for taking his dogs on almost all of his military campaigns. What breed of dogs did he have with him? And possibly, as records go, one or two might have followed him to the Little Bighorn. How, what breed of dog did George Armstrong Custer have with him just less than two weeks before he perished in Little Bighorn? Now, if can you can wants, you give a hint if it's a bird dog breed or not? No, it's a, it's a hunting dog. I I, I keep okay. everything uh, some type of a okay. hunting See, dog. Uh, I, don't have time to, I don't have time to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these uh, every question I have has something to do with a hunting dog, so it doesn't mean it was a Brittany. You know, I don't even think they but were. Is it me. is it bird hunting or no, can no, it be it's just hunting dog? Hunting well, back. my mine's mine's technically right though. Well, you don't even know. I didn't give you the. Well, answer. no, my no. Most most people won't think this is a hunting dog, but from a police perspective, I think it is. All right, all right, all right, Courtney. What's your answer? Coming up with it, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go with, with a beagle. A beagle. All right. Ben, what do you think? Greyhound. All right. Evan, what do you think? German short hair. German short hair. No, the breed was not. Oh, the see. Yeah. 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 No, I threw it away. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. Nick, gun, gun, uh, dog. answer it yourself, Nick Adair. Foxhound. Foxhound. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Roof. Roof. Well, Cockeyes wolf. What what's the uh... I gotta get out my cockeyes? So Custer's of a German descent because I was at Little Bighorn just a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the dogs' name was Kaiser. So I think the better answer would have been the German short hair, but I went with the with the German shepherd. <laughs> Again, not developed <laughs> at that point. Well, it, well uh, the uh, the entire panel was stumped tonight. It was Scottish deer hounds. Mm -hmm. Scottish deer hounds. So that Pretty means cool. his wife, he got his wife out of the hills. <laughs> Could have, because he's, have. he's of German descent. There's no Scottish. So uh, I don't know if I believe that because there's a book called Empire of the Rising or Empire of the Summer Moon. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was, he had at one point greyhounds. No, you know, in your defense, Ben, um, he had several breeds of dogs. All he had as many oh. as nineteen breeds of dogs, and he Gosh. actually had <clears throat> Private John Burke was assigned to the to Armstrong to watch his dogs during his whole commission 
Private John Burke was the dog tender, and he did have several breeds of dogs. Didn't didn't Cornwallis have greyhounds in the Revolutionary War? Great Danes. I think yeah, Great Great Danes. Danes. Great Danes. Yep. Right. All right. So I'm gonna say nobody actually got that one, but Ben was close. At least he thought of hound. So I give him that point, huh? Good. Hey, I said foxhound. I wouldn't give him the point. Yeah, foxhound's a hound too. So no, no point. All right, our fifth question. Of all the upland game birds, okay, upland game birds, what bird flies the fastest? And I'm talking sharp tail, rough grouse, quail, sage grouse, prairie chickens, woodcock, chuckers, pheasants. What bird flies the fastest? I might have a challenge. I don't mean which game. bird you I don't mean which bird you miss the most. I mean which bird flies the fastest that's been clocked. I might have a challenge on this I, I, I'm sure you will, Rusty. I'm sure you will. I don't know the exact name though. I'll use category instead. Okay. All right. All right. Answers, everybody. Courtney, what bird flies the fastest? Chucker. The chukar. Chukar partridge. All right. Ben. Chukar, another chucker partridge. Evan, what do you got? I figured, I figured ptarmigan because they have to bust out of the snow. And they have to be strong to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, what do you have? Chucker here too. Chucker, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and Roof, what? Uh, I'm I'm kind of going. I'm going kind of going way back <laughs> during the dinosaur age because I don't know about all you swamp Yankees, but my family's been here a long time, and we used to hunt some of them flying dinosaurs. And I don't know the exact name of them, but some of them would fly 80 miles an hour. I remember seeing that at the museum. What? What? I can't read it. I don't know the name of the flying one. Just though. dinosaurs. Di so just dinosaur. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, well, flying dinosaurs. You win. It's like, yeah, you win. Right. Give it to us. And, 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 <laughs> and I'm telling you, back then, there was no bismuth. Everything was lead. Okay. All right. Well, here, here's so the I don't know the name of it. The answer to that question is the ring neck pheasant at 55 mm. miles, or I'm sorry, at 48 miles per hour. And when the pheasant is being pursued, it can reach a speed of 60 miles an hour. How's that? Well, you guys ought to know after one week, you know, there's always going to be the answer pheasant. Uh, okay. I've been hunting with you for. I've been hunting with you for almost 40 years that I've seen your dogs chase the pheasant for a mile. So I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So nobody. Oh, and just for, I, I, I had dove in here and about an hour ago, I realized that doves were migratory and I would not consider them upland game birds. A dove on a normal flight can fly 55 miles an hour. So Ron, you don't consider woodcock an upland bird? I, I do, but it's one that we kind of shoot over the dogs more, you know. So I, yeah, wood woodcock, they they're they're slow. They're, you know, if they don't have a tailwind, they're gonna lay down and eat worms. All right, all right. Uh, number six question: the top eight pheasant hunting states in America. You know, I love pheasants. <clears throat> are Iowa, Minnesota, North Dakota, Kansas, South Dakota. Montana, Nebraska, and Colorado. Which of those states has the highest possession limit? Not daily bag limit. The highest possession limit. I'll give you, I'll give you the states again. Iowa, Minnesota, North Dakota, Kansas, South Dakota, Montana, Nebraska, and Colorado. Which state has the highest possession limit when you get pulled over by the DNR. Not counting anything in a crock pot. 
it, it, yes, Rusty, we're not we're not in the kitchen. We're being pulled over on the side of the road. Well, I, yeah, just so you hear it again, real. Iowa, Minnesota, North Dakota, Kansas, South Dakota, Montana, <clears throat> Nebraska, and Colorado. Which state has the most or the highest possession limit? I really got to get a sound effects machine. Courtney, your answer. South Dakota. South Dakota. All right. Ben, your answer. Kansas. Oh, he even gave a number. Um, Evan. South Dakota. South Dakota. And Nick. I Mike. just picked the first one you said, Iowa. <laughs> I have no idea. Nick, you got to get out of Tennessee a little bit, okay? <laughs> I'm down here all by myself in the southeast. What I can know. I say? All, you, all you got is a, a possible quail somewhere down there. <laughs> somewhere. Um, and Roof. Uh, uh, Roof's, uh-oh. Roof's wearing his cockeyes. <laughs> <laughs> South Dakota. Um <clears throat> My answer here on my sheet is Kansas at 16. And South Dakota is at 15. 15. Yeah. Five times three, Kansas is four, four by four. Times four, probably. Yeah. Uh, Montana's nine, North Dakota's 12, Minnesota six, Iowa 12. All right. On the subject, number seven, on the subject of pheasant hunting states. Other than the ones I mentioned, what other states east of the Mississippi have a wild pheasant season? Great. Any, as many as you can. What other states east can of you the Mississippi? Uh, whatever. Do the state release programs count? Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Name as many states as you can that have a wild pheasant population or wild pheasant season. Yeah. <laughs> and that One was of east answers. of the Mississippi in general or east, of the, east Mississippi. of the Mississippi and what you already didn't mention in the previous question. Right, yeah, nothing to do with the other ones. Those are all those are all west of the Mississippi. This is I don't remember what those were, so I might be repetitive. No, none of those I mentioned are repetitive. There are, okay. there are several states east of the Mississippi that still maintain a wild pheasant population and a regulated hunting season. One of my answers is a season, but they don't have pheasants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Not like they used to anyways. All right. Here we go. All right, Courtney, what do you got? I'm not done yet. Hold on. Okay. All right. What? 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 Do 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 do. Okay. Do, do, do. What do you got? All right. I'm gonna go with Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, and Illinois. Okay. Ben, what do you got? I have I have got uh, Wisconsin, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York. Mm -hmm. And Evan, what do you got? Hold on. I thought you said east of the Mississippi. Yeah, he did. Those were all <laughs> east did. of the Mississippi. Uh, well, not, no. not Missouri. Missouri West. Not, yes, okay, okay. That's, that threw me off. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So uh, New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Delaware, and Maryland. Come again? Sorry, I need to write those down. Okay. New York? I, 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 guess I, I, I guess I screwed this one up. I should have said the top five, but all right. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but, but that's okay. That's okay. And New York? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so that means none of those. No, well, well, I'll give you the answers here, and then and, right. and Simon will score this card. I've got Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> well, 
Well, there's there's a wild population down there. I'm telling you. Is is it is it is it for a season, a regulated mm -hmm. season? Yep. Mm. Well, this may be one of these answers that everybody gets right or everybody gets wrong. All right, and roof. Uh, the most states you can come up with. All right, I I had Pennsylvania, and I crossed it off when the comment came up about the release program. So I got Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Me and right. from Illinois, that was pretty easy for me on this one. All I don't right. know if it's the top five, though. The, the, the top, actually, it's the top six that I have here. So, Simon, you're going to have to pay attention. And Hang on. I need, I need Evans again before we go. I have everybody else's. Evan, just start. Yeah. New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Delaware, and Maryland. All right. The answers, the top six. And that's my fault. But you know what? This is an unprofessional podcast and an unprofessional trivia. Uh -oh. game. And eventually someone's going to help me manage this thing. Oh, the, the top six states east of the Mississippi are Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. But New York is an answer, but it's not the top six. So that's that's my fault. So if you had New York, I'm okay with that. So who wins? Same again. Which one's um, on? Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. All right, so, who's got that one? I got two. Got them. Yeah, five. I think Ben got them all. Yeah. Yeah, Ben's got them. Ben's got them all. God damn it. I missed Pennsylvania. You oh. did, yeah. So a little bit of a score update here in the middle of everything. Um, yeah. Ben's got seven out of six questions right so far. Ooh. <laughs> ben? Boy, that's, that, <laughs> that is going to be... How many? How many does Roof have right? <laughs> well, I got well, two challenge. I got two protests active, so <laughs> you know I might withdraw the protests if I again, not mathematically. Again, this is not a democracy, Roof. But um, no. Uh, so so far we have two for Cardney and two for Ben. Uh, Roof has one. That would be it. All right. So our eighth question. What game bird in North America still hunted today, and that means upland game bird, show up in fossil remains from two and a half million years ago? What game bird in North America showed up in fossil remains from two and a half million years ago? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not the pheasant. Okay? I just want to let you know that right off the bat. Any type of game bird or upland specific? Uh, I, I would say it's an upland game bird. Yeah, it was something we would hunt with our dogs. You know, with any luck, you know, they'd point them, but they would. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the oldest fossil of a modern day game bird from North America, two and a half million years ago, was running around this continent. All right. There's only one answer, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you a lot of time for this. One game bird. There's the bell, and Courtney. I'm gonna go with the ruffed grouse. The ruffed grouse. All right, Ben. Dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woodcock. <laughs> Woodcock, woodcock right? is my answer. Ben, Ben's going woodcock, also known as dinosaur. Okay. All right. Ben, everybody knows that the woodcock was put together by the Indians and it was a conglomeration of, you know, five different birds. Anyway. All right. Evan, what do you got? I put the quail. Quail. And Nick, what do you have? Prairie chicken. Prairie chicken. You know, that's probably the one I would have guessed. And Roof, what game bird? I went with the robin. I went with the robin. <laughs> That's a modern game bird. It is when you're hunting with my father-in-law. <laughs> Former father-in-law. 
and it is <laughs> and it is where you're hunting doves in uh, in Virginia, yeah. and somebody gives Ruth a breast a popper, and it was a it was a robin. Yeah. Uh, the correct answer is quail. Evan, Evan's on the board. Those were yellow. I, I was, was thinking the scaled spell. quail and all the ones were... down here. The quail. The quail. But they were. My reasoning is they just the woodcock looks so goofy. It's got to be so the orange belly dove, wasn't it? No, no, mm -mm. nope, it wasn't. All right, um, our ninth question, and I don't think that anybody can even beat Ben at this point, but we will have statistics as the show goes on. Courtney can win. We're well, tied. Oh, you're tied. Yeah, Courtney has two, Ben yeah. has two. Oh, I mean, I've got, wow. I've got, I've won nine out of ten, but Courtney can still ten technically win. Ten, ten out of nine. nine. Yeah. Oh. Ten out of oh. nine. I hope you like the television shows for my day. Our ninth oh, question. Boy. I'm doomed. Uh oh. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. Did Courtney. they have TV in the 1800s? <laughs> yeah. Yes, they did, Ben. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> On the television show Columbo, starring Peter Falk, one of my favorite shows. I watched with my mother every week it was on. What breed of dog was owned by Col Detective Columbo? And it's a hunting breed a, that you would all recognize. Think of Columbo, the raincoat. The, I, I'm, I'm giving you hints on this one. <laughs> what breed of dog was owned by Detective Columbo on the television, the, dog, the dog didn't have a name on the show, though. I, I didn't say he did, but you're you're right, Rusty. You're right. In fact, Detective Columbo. No, I know he didn't. Detective Columbo I didn't I have a name. Love that show. And Lieutenant Columbo was the only name you ever saw, and his wife was Mrs. Columbo, and all those characters were fictional characters. His nephews, his daughters, his sons. He right. made them all up, but. All right, let me get my. All right, right, Courtney. What breed of dog? I'm going with the Labrador. Labrador. All right, who's up, Ben? It was simply called Dog. Yes. And dog was a basset hound. Ah, uh, and Evan. I went Labrador as well. Labrador as well, Nick. I did Cocker. I don't even know what Columbo is. <laughs> oh, you know, you guys could YouTube a little shit once in a while and you might learn something. You know, you know, hey, Nick, everything you need to know in a dog world is not from, from uh, Standing Stone Kennels, okay? Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Noted. All right. I want you to start doing some deeper YouTube searches on dogs, okay? And so Ruth, Google Columbo, got it. Roof, what is your answer? Okay. So, so Ronnie knows Big Jake is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I named my son after Jacob McCandle, Jake, right? Mm -hmm. So in that movie, remember, there was a dog. He just referred to him as dog, remember? Right, right. And he was a rough collie. So that's what I'm going with. A rough collie, because his name was Dog. Also, it's got to be worth a half a point. Well, well, once again, so Ruth, you're, you're once again you're wrong. The answer is, uh, first of all, Ruth, it was it's a hunting dog. Okay, so try to try to focus on that a little bit. It was a basset hound. You you guys are splitting hairs on hunting dogs and stuff. <laughs> yes, we are. I, you call your Baracos hunting dog, so you guys are split hairs. <laughs> hey now. Yeah, uh, hey now. <laughs> um, all right, so Ben, Basset Hound. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you. All right. Now this one, I like to wrap up my last question that is, how, how do I say? Well, you'll see a theme as these trivia games go on the last question has something to do with either reproduction or gender or um the last one was you know what bird practices harem defense polygamy our 10th question last question is 
scientists have recorded a single male sage grouse copulating 37 times with 37 different females on a lek. A lek, for those of you who don't know, is the breeding grounds where the females pick the best looking male to say, give it to me. A sage grouse copulated 37 times with 37 different females. How long did this process take? Like, is that in a single year over multiple years? No, it was, it was at, 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 with a scientific sighting at a lek. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was over a week. I don't know, but I can tell you that they, it, it, they had one male that bred 37 different females. How long did it take him to breed 37 females? Qualifying, I got to. And I will accept the closest. Clarification, name. please. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Rusty. Clarification, please. Yes, please do. Adolescent male, mature male, or a senior male? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure how that, I'm not sure how that ties in, but I think I know where you're going with it. You know, from the old bull, the young bull up on top of the hill, and literally, <laughs> the old the old bull says, "Let's walk down and breed them all." Yeah. All right. Yeah. Courtney, how long did this amazing scientific uh, observation of a sage grouse copulating 37 different females, how long did that I'm take? Going, I'm going with three weeks. Okay. Ben. My answer is Basset Hound. <laughs> six days. Six, six days. Okay. Evan. 48 hours, two days. 48 hours, two days. And Nick? Two weeks, 14 two days. Weeks. And Roof, if you could share with us your wisdom. Well, I, I went to back to the math. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I went back to the math. All right, so, let's hear it. <laughs> as an adolescent, five times a day, <clears throat> times seven days gets you to 35 days so you still need a hook so i went with eight days eight days the answer and i i got this off the website from the cornell university which is the largest compilation of not copulation the largest whatever it is database of bird biology it took 37 minutes. So who had the lowest answer? I think it was yeah. 37 minutes. 37 um, minutes. So that's Are like one a minute. That's funny. I originally put Are you four, sure four that it wasn't hours, Woody Woodpecker it to 48. <laughs> How did that not so win the, the fastest bird? That has to be the fastest bird. 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> now, now Courtney, <laughs> Courtney, think about this. If anybody had sex 37 times in 37 minutes, you couldn't fly fast. You, <laughs> you, just, you just couldn't. All right. So we who had the lowest answer? Here, Mr. Mr. Ron, there's a tie. No, there's no tiebreaker, actually. No, you're good. What do we have, no, Simon? No. Um, we have second and third place shared by Evan and Courtney was two points. And first place was Ben, Ben with three points. Three? That's it? Three? Three, that's it. You only need one more to win. That's it. All right. Well, yeah. so that is it. Ben Brennington, again, the reigning champion of Hunting Dog Podcast Trivia. I can do it in the hospital. I can do it in somebody else's home. Maybe next week I'll be in my... <laughs> Who knows? Now, I will tell you. But can you that, do it in 37 minutes? 37 minutes. I think 30, 37 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> that was good. All right. I want to thank everybody for coming on. 
uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And uh, Ben, you're gonna have to defend your title. I'll, I'll give you guys and my, my patrons that are listening in on Zoom room and politely muted themselves, except somebody is making noise. I think it's Jonathan down here. Let me mute him. Um, uh, there we go. Anyway, um, next month in sep in September. I'm told by Ryan Cal Callahan that he wants to try his hand at hunting dog podcast trivia. Now, you know, the man's only owned three labs in his life. I don't expect him to do well. And in October, we're going to have team Garmin against team Gunner Kennels. Um, and Ben, I mean, if, if you're still in the running, you're, you're in, and there'll be a few other patrons invited and a few other people, but uh, thanks for coming on and thanks for joining in on the second episode of Hunting Dog Podcast Trivia. And Ruth, thanks for all your, uh, you know, what would you call it? Uh, well, bad, bad I, information. I'm officially, I'm officially withdrawing my three protests, so I'm going to concede. Okay. All right. All right, let me pause the, uh, anybody is on here is welcome to stay on here. I'm going to resume with my normal Zoom room here. I'm going to stop the recording. Boom.